While recent headlines have painted a hopeful picture for the UK economy, is everything as rosy as it seems? Today, we're diving into inflation and housing price data in order to uncover the truth. First, let's tackle inflation. The drop to 4.6% is great, but it's not the full story. Energy prices are down, but what about other areas? If we look at food and beverage, for example, they're slightly down, but remains very high at over 10%. Despite the fall, 4.6% is still over twice the target of the Bank of England. Remember as well that last year, household got a subsidy of 400 pounds to cover some of the energy prices, but this year, there's no such thing. So the cost to household this year, despite the, the fall in energy prices, is not that different to what it was last year. Sure, salary growth has now outpaced inflation, but for how long? The growth in unemployment is likely to slow the growth in wages, meaning that it could be a long time before wages recover to their real term level from before the current inflationary period. And wage growth is still lower than inflation for some items, like food, for example. So households are going to continue feeling squeezed for a while. Next, let's talk about the housing market. A 0.1% fall in house prices does not tell the full story. Two key things, there are regional differences and the ONS data relies on price paid data, which looks at completed transaction. And as a result of this, it is information that is quite old by the time it gets published. It reflects the price of houses several months in the past. If you're buying or selling a house, relying on lag data can be dangerous. Especially if you're buying a house, you do not want to overpay for a property while there is other evidence that house prices have fallen further than what the, the ONS figure would make you believe. But there's more, things like seasonal variation also make the figures harder to interpret. And keep in mind that the figures reported in the press are always the ones that are the most attention-grabbing. So looking into the details is going to save you a world of hurt if you have to make big decisions like buying a house. If you're interested in going deeper, David Hand has a very short introduction to measurement in which there is a chapter on economic data that would give you a lot more details about how those numbers are constructed. I will put a link in the description below. In a world overflowing with information, looking at the data behind the headlines is key to make better decisions. Remember, a little data literacy goes a long way. If you're interested in data literacy, why not look at this video in which I explain why generations do not exist? I will see you there. Bye for now.